Today, uh, as usual, we finish off the induction. Okay, we finish off the induction. Then, uh, if we have time, then we do uh, discuss some practical. Yeah? Practical for your A2. So, okay, we done about uh, electromagnetism. Okay, only got the last part. The last part is the eddy current. Okay, so what you learned so far? Uh, this this question, eh? Yeah. Okay, class. So just uh, today's lesson is going to be start with question. Sorry. Uh, we're done with uh, a small recap first about induction. So first, what you learn about induction, electromagnetic like induction. First, you learn about magnetic flux. Okay, what is magnetic flux? Anyone? What is magnetic flux? Uh, the is the product of magnetic field strength normal to the surface area and the area. Eh? It's a magnetic flux. Unit is Weber. So after magnetic flux, what do you learn? After magnetic flux, you learn about two Faraday's law. Uh, so two laws, sorry, governing the induction. First is what Faraday's law. What Faraday's law stated? Faraday's law stated EMF induced is directly proportional to the what? rate of changes of magnetic flux linkage, okay? Magnetic flux linkage. What is magnetic flux linkage? It's the B dot A dot N, number of turns. Okay, after Faraday's law, we learn about Lenz's law. Eh? Uh, what is Lenz's law? What Lenz's law is the confusing one. Lenz's law stated that uh, the direction of the induced EMF is such as to oppose the change which produces it. Okay, it opposes the, uh, the creator. Eh? So, yeah, so that is Lenz's law. Okay, so one question from here. Everyone can listen, right? Can you see the PowerPoint, eh? Guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So this question is uh, the final one. Uh, very good question. A lot of long-minded uh, wording, but I straight go to the diagram to explain to you. Okay, what this, this wording is about, uh, this diagram, okay, this is the question. A trolley was carrying a rectangular coil, A, B, C, D, and it's a, it's a loop, and the trolley is moving forward with the constant speed, constant velocity uh, forward, and uh, about five centimeter away, uh, zero to five centimeter away, the coil will start to interact with the magnetic field, and the magnetic field is found to be around, uh, how long? around uh, 15 centimeter, eh? it's around 15 centimeter. The coil size AB is around, if I'm not mistaken, AB is how much? AB is around 10 centimeter. Eh? So this is only 10 centimeter, okay? So this is 10 centimeter, yeah. So this is 15 centimeter, okay? So after the coil passed through the magnetic field, it will leave in the magnetic field. So now the question, straight to the question, eh? You see the length first, the dimension. Eh? AB is 10 centimeter. AD is 5 centimeter. This is 5 centimeter. Okay. It's 10 centimeter. Okay. Then what? Okay. So the speed is no? Do you know the speed? Uh, the resistance is 20 ohm. Where's the resistance? The carrying rectangular loop, or oh, the rectangular loop has a resistance of 20 ohm. And uh, the magnetic field strength is four Tesla. 
and uh, the speed the speed is 100 centimeter per second okay the speed is important so 100 centimeter per second remember these values the rectangular coil has a 20 ohm resistor the magnetic field strength is 4 tesla the speed of the trolley is 100 centimeter per second the dimension of the trolley is 10 centimeter in long 5 centimeter width okay, first question uh, a1 state and explain whether there is induced emf in the rectangular loop when the leading edge bc is traveling between 0 to 5 centimeter mark is there any induced emf and give reason state and explain 0 to 5 okay go back to the diagram eh? so the loop is traveling forward from 0 to 5 centimeter 0 to 5 centimeter is there any emf will be induced Anyone? Anyone? No. Yeah. So what is the reason? What is the reason? It does not cut the magnetic flux. Very good. So the conductor does not cut the magnetic flux. Eh? That does not cut the magnetic field, actually. Eh? Magnetic field line. So no EMF induced cross. Okay, 0 to 5, there is no induced EMF. 5 to 10. 5 to 10, definitely there will be a induced EMF because the rectangular coil already start to move into the magnetic field strength. Okay. Can you tell me, when the A, B, C, D, eh, the, the rectangular coil pass 5 to 10 centimeter, 5 to 10 centimeter, the current in the magnetic field, the current in the coil will, will, will move in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction? Think. And the AB is moving into the coil, into, into the magnetic field, passes 5 to 10 centimeter. I think 5 to 10 centimeters is already here, uh, it's somewhere here. The coil is already shifted here. Partially in magnetic field, another half is not yet in magnetic field, uh, 5 to 10 centimeter. It, there will be an EMF induced. Uh, reason is what? Because the coil experience changes in magnetic flux. Okay, the, the coil experience changes in magnetic flux. The keyword changes in magnetic flux is very important. Therefore, EMF is induced according to the Faraday's law. Now, the current will be clockwise and anticlockwise. Anyone? With the reason? It's entering. So, use your lenses law. Lenses law. Clockwise and anticlockwise. So what lenses law say? Uh, the direction of the induced EMF is such as to oppose the change. What change happens here? Flux increasing or decreasing? Going in. When it's going in into the magnetic field, the flux is rising or decreasing? Anyone? Flux is rising. Eh? Flux is rising. Because at the beginning, 0 to 5, flux is 0, no flux, because no magnetic field overlapping with the region. When you come to the 5 to 10, uh, you already have a flux. Flux is B dot A. Uh, B dot A, uh, B, the 4 Tesla. Okay, and the A should be the area of this, the area which is, uh, what do you call, overlapping with the magnetic field. So there is a flux. The flux is rising, 5 to 10. So if the flux is rising, According to Lenz's law, uh, the current must move in a such a way that to reduce the flux or to increase the flux. Because you don't like the change, you know, the change is the flux. Mm -hmm. is so you try to reduce the flux. Eh? The current will move such a way that to reduce the flux. So how it should move to reduce the flux? You must the current must create the same a magnetic field, same direction as the original magnetic field, oppose the original magnetic field. Of course. It should oppose the original magnetic field. So the current should flow clockwise and anticlockwise. Use your right hand grip rule. Your thumb must point outward eh? because original magnetic field is inward. You want to decrease the flux so that it must create a field opposite to the original field. So your thumb must point upwards. So your finger pointing which direction the current flows uh, should be anticlockwise. So current will start to flow anticlockwise. That's good. So when the, when the ABC, the, the rectangular coil enters the 5 to 10, 
the current will flow anti clockwise suddenly current will start to flow i uh, mean okay 5 to 10 uh, okay so the question is 5 to 10 mark yes there will be a emf induced uh, so that's your b answer uh, b when bc is between 5 to 10 cm marks the b2 uh, the b2 answer check uh, only bc cuts the magnetic field electromagnetic induction occurs induced current flow upward from c to b and round the loop in the anti clockwise direction so the current will be in anti clockwise direction uh, okay so here you can use right hand fleming rule also to get to get the direction of the current okay another way another way okay uh, you can use the bc is cutting the magnetic field line okay and uh, you you don't go for the the other parts only the bc is cutting the field line so check the the magnetic field magnetic field is into the page so you put your as directed in this in this uh, appearance eh? your index finger must be into the page must be right hand grip uh, right hand fleming rule eh? fleming left hand rule sorry right hand rule index finger into the page your force must be to the right because the coil is moving to the right so the current will be upwards so the current will be upwards so c to b current will flow so you complete the circular so you go anti clockwise okay okay two ways to find the direction of the current eh? okay so c 15 to 20 is there will be induced emf okay now go back to the diagram 15 to 20 15 to 20 the coil is i think at 15 the entire coil is already in the magnetic field eh? when it's at 15 eh? and when it from 15 20 to move the entire coil is still in the magnetic field just displacing to the right so is there will be any emf induced is there any flux change no no very good there is no flux change. The flux change is found to be constant. It's constant. Eh? Uh, why constant? The entire loop is in the magnetic field. So it's just displacing, but the B dot A is still the same. Eh? B dot A is the same. The magnetic field is the same. Area, the total area is overlapping. The area does not increasing. The overlapping region does not increasing or decreasing. So flux is constant. So therefore, from 15 to 20, you see there is no flux change. There is therefore there is no rate of changes of magnetic flux. So according to Faraday's law, no EMF induced, so no current was induced. Okay, keyword is what? No flux change. Flux is constant. 15 to 20. Uh, so that's the reason law uh, three. Uh, you see the three, and the BC is between 15 to 20. Marks both BC and AD are in the magnetic field. As the EMF induced are both sides of the loop cancel each other, there is a no induced current in the rectangular loop. This is another way of explaining. Okay, uh, use the one I told you just now. You just say when entire uh, loop is in the coil, the total magnetic flux uh, does not change. Therefore, no changes in the rate of changes of magnetic flux, no EMF induced. Okay, then 20 to 25. Is there any EMF will be induced? 2025. So let me erase this. Now the coil was at the beginning was here 20 and it was partially comes up. It reached to 25. It's now like this. Eh? From here it moved to the to the right. Okay. So is there will be any EMF induced? There will be induced right EMF, right? The flux is dropping or rising in this case. The flux is dropping. So that means there is a changes in magnetic flux. Therefore, according to Faraday's law, uh, there is a rate of changes of magnetic flux. So EMF will induce. Can okay, now tell me extra question? Uh, this is your A, B, C, D. Okay. Tell me the current will flow from 20 to 25 centimeter when it moves from 20 to 25 centimeter. Current will flow clockwise or anticlockwise? Clockwise. So is it going to be clockwise? Let me see. The flux is dropping. So the according to Lenz's law, the current move in a such a way to rise the flux. The flux will be raised by the current. So to rise the flux, the current must produce 
the magnetic field in the same direction as the original magnetic field eh? because you want to rise the flux because you don't like the change the change is dropping flux is dropping you will try to rise the flux so you must create a magnetic field same direction right into the page so use your right hand grip rule so the current will flow clockwise direction eh? clockwise direction yes good so this is uh, the direction of the current uh, is there you got a emf or not and uh, all you have to use faraday's law and lenz's law eh? okay so that's part a okay part a okay part b calculate the emf induced in the rectangular loop when the leading edge bc is traveling between 5 to 15 how much is the emf induced when the trolley is moving 5 to 15 sorry 5 to 15 eh 5 to 15 the original one how much is the emf is induced we move from 5 from here 5 to 15 eh 15 is that means entirely was inside the magnetic field how much is the emf induced 5 to 15 the length is 10 cm okay sorry uh, the length is 10 cm right 10 cm width is 5 cm okay come on keep it right so the length is 10 cm the width is 5 cm okay the speed is traveling is 100 cm per second the magnetic field strength is 4 tesla What is the EMF induced when it move from five to fifteen? So how do you start your working first? EMF equals to negative of magnetic rate of change of magnetic flux linkage, right? So the EMF equals to uh, minus uh, what do you call uh, final flux minus the initial flux? Sorry, not Q uh, flux. final flux minus the initial flux over the time taken eh uh, bracket okay so what is the final magnetic flux linkage final magnetic flux linkage is b dot a dot n final one minus initial flux linkage initial zero or final zero the flux initial zero right because initial the coil is entirely not overlapping the magnetic field so the initial flux you should know is zero the final flux become b a n b is the magnetic field strength for tesla a is the a area which overlapping with the magnetic field i think by 15 the entire a has been overlapping already so we use the entire area 5 times 50 uh, 5 times 10 eh? as your area change to into meter and n is there any number of turns in this coil Do you have any number of turns? If you check, is there any any number of turns? Five centimeters. I never put any number of turns, eh? So if no turns, n taken to be zero. Okay. But uh, they never tell the time now. They never tell the time. What is the time it takes from move from five to fifteen? Uh, what are you going to do? Because this is b a n over time. Okay. over time how do you find the time time i think you know the speed under centimeter it travel a distance of how much the distance in travel forward is 5 to 15 so it travel 10 cm the distance i think from here distance and speed eh, you can work out the time so you can put the time here eh? you can put the time and you can find the emf okay so anyone got the answer how much Okay, so straight I show the working. Eh? Hope you try to get the idea. So this is the B one. Okay, so this is the first equation. Maybe you get one mark for this sometimes. Eh? Another one mark for your substitution, of course. Eh? You see the substitution. Hope this is in your mind. Uh, initial flux is zero. Eh? Initial flux is zero. Final flux is P dot A dot N. Area is in term, put it in terms of meter. 
10 times uh, 5 and the time taken is 0 0.1 second how the, how how they got 0 0.1 second uh, the speed equals to distance over time find the time uh, time is distance over speed so 10 divided by 100 uh, you get 0 0.1 second that's why you got the time uh, then you can find the voltage generated in the coil is negative 0 0.2 volt okay uh, yeah so this is the answer Any problem with the working? Any any part you don't understand? So final flux minus the initial flux. Okay. So 0 0.2 volt is generated. Okay, we go back. Okay, that's the part B1. Eh? Part B1. 5 to 15 centimeter. What is the EMF? Next, what is the EMF induced when 20 to 30? You move from 20 to 30, what is the EMF induced? 20 to 30, okay. Uh, let me clear this. 20 to 30. 20, I think, is entirely inside the uh, magnetic field. And 30, 30 means entirely going to out of the magnetic field. In, entirely in, then entirely out from 20 to 30. So what is the EMF induced here? Same. It's going to be the same. Very good. Uh -huh. It's going to be the same. Going in, nothing, and entirely in. It's going to be the same as the first one. Okay. So two, but now the final flux is going to be zero. Uh -huh. Initial flux is going to have a value. The time is still 0 0.1, so you get positive 0 0.2. Uh -huh. Negative 2, 0 0.2 volt, positive 0 0.2 volt tells the direction of the induced current will be, will be opposite. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. So that's the part B. Okay, that's part B. Hope you understand how to calculate it. Okay, next. Uh, calculate the power. Okay, now you see part C. Calculate the power P produced in the rectangle loop when the leading edge BC is traveling between 5 to 15 centimeter. Okay, again. So 5 to 15 centimeter. Nothing inside the magnetic field. Entire thing will be inside the magnetic field when travel 15. What is the power? Okay, what is the power generated in this coil? Uh, you know, already know the resistance. Eh? You know resistance? You know resistance? Uh, what is the resistance? Resistance given was, uh, where is it? 20 ohm. Eh? Resistance is 20 ohm. The coil has a 20 ohm resistance. So you know resistance. Okay, now you know the voltage. Now you know the what is voltage generated here. Just now you got 0 0.2, right? So what is the power? So what formula for power? Power equals to? This is an electrical circuit wire. So you know V, you know R. So we use V squared over R. Eh? V squared over R will give you the power. The voltage is 0 0.2 volt. Just put the magnitude only. And the R is uh, the 20 ohm. 20 ohm or 10 ohm? But uh, 20 ohm. Eh? So 20 ohm of resistance is used. Square, you get the power. Same thing goes for the number two, the power. OK. So the C1, the power is V squared over R, so 0 0.2 over 20 squared, you get the power. Okay? Yes. Okay, any question about the power? Power is electricity, it's not a big problem, there's nothing to do with electromagnet. Eh? Okay, so that's the power, C. Can I look at D? Because please stop me if you have any question. Eh? Okay, D. Uh, this is something which we learned something new that day, yesterday. Eh? Plot the graph magnetic flux versus position of X. How the flux is changing? Position of X. X means traveling from 0 to 30 maybe. Eh? Uh, 0 to 5, no flux, right? 0 to 5, no flux. 5 to 15, flux is rising. 15 to 20, flux become constant because the entire thing is inside the car, inside the magnetic field. So 15 to 20, flux never change, constant, but very high, now, but constant. Eh? Then 20 to 30, flux is dropping to zero. Correct? So look at the diagram. So this is the flux change. Eh? Hope this is the graph in your mind, the flux. 
0 to 5, flux is 0, because 1. And then 5 to 15, flux is rising, goes up, because the coil is slowly get into the magnetic field, flux should rise, B dot A, A rising. And from 15 to 20, the entire coil is inside the magnetic field, so flux become constant. Then 20 to 25, uh, 30, flux is dropping again. Eh? So this is your flux versus X graph. Okay. So now tell me, if flux is changing like this, how the EMF graph going to look like? EMF graph. When flux is zero, no change, EMF going to be constant, correct? EMF will be constant, no change in the EMF because according to Faraday's or Lenz's law, EMF is rate of changes of magnetic flux and oppositely directed negative. Eh? This is your lens. Eh? This is your lens's law. This is your Faraday's law. Eh? Okay. So uh, imagine your, what do you call your flux graphs as your velocity graph. Uh, this is your, like your acceleration graph, but later you reflect it at x axis. Eh? So here, flux is rising, like velocity is going up, gradient is constant, acceleration must be constant up. But reflection x-axis is going to be down, eh? immediately drop down your flux, okay? your EMF, sorry. Then when the flux is constant, third region, flux once constant, EMF of course is zero, eh? no change. There's no rate of changes of flux means no EMF. And third, fourth one, the flux is dropping, there is a change, but it's like a velocity. Eh? Imagine like velocity, velocity is going down, it's a constant velocity, sorry, constant gradient. So acceleration must be negative, constant, but reflected at x-axis become up here for flux, uh, for EMF, sorry. Yeah? So EMF is up. So EMF I basically is all a flat line normally. Yeah? Any question about EMF graph? Okay, then the third one, they want the power graph, power versus x, how the graph looks like. You already know EMF, you already know EMF, Voltage, you know, ready. So power going to be uh, like this, based on what formula? Uh, based on uh, V squared of R. Eh? Power is V squared of R. Okay. When V is constant, V is uh, zero, power is zero. When V has a certain value constant, power is constant, la, positive. Uh, when the EMF negative, still power going to be positive. Eh? Because like scalar quantity, power, so positive, no such thing as negative power. And this also positive. Okay. Just use V squared of R. You have a constant value. Any class, any question from this? No questions, eh? Okay, so this is uh, one uh, graph and everything, eh? Okay, let me go back to one pass here. Okay, just one pass here. Eh? I choose the wrong file. Induction. Sorry, I have to go back to the Times. We're going to do the pass here first, eh? question eh, about what you learn. Okay. Uh, we do the number six first, zero two. We call back what you learn in your induction. Okay. So this is a transformer. Eh? Transformer, a coil A and a coil B, soft iron core. Okay, now 
when the current I in the coil A is switched on, then off, the variation with the time T of the current is shown like this. Okay, this is how the current is changing in the coil A, the coil A, and the coil A. The current is changing, it's not constant, the current is changing like this. Okay, the question is, how the EMF will be induced in the secondary coil? What graph? Okay, one minute for you. Sketch the graph. This is your current graph in the conductor. How the magnetic field, how, how the voltage, how much the voltage induced in the coil? How the graph, this graph looks like? Try to sketch, come on. This is our pass here. Uh, how many marks given? Uh, three marks. Three marks to sketch the graph. Okay, we go part by part. Okay, the first one, the curve, second one, the flight line, third one, and the straight line going down with a negative gradient, fourth one. Okay. Okay, for the first one, how's the EMF going to graph going to look like? Straight line with gradient, a flat line, or a curve. Number one, because EMF is what? EMF is negative of the uh, rate of changes of magnetic flux. Eh? But the flux is B dot A dot N over time is EMF. But the current is inside the magnetic field. I told you this last class. So I, B, flux, the graph shape is the same. So you can assume this I as the flux graph. It's a flux graph. So for the number one, EMF will be how much? B, zero. Uh, no EMF because no change in flux. But flux is constant. You can imagine like velocity. Uh, velocity. Velocity graph, zero. Velocity is constant and zero. Acceleration, zero. Uh, it's like acceleration. Okay, one, no problem, of course. Two. Okay, anyone? Flux is curving. How's the voltage graph going to look like? Flat line, straight line with gradient, or a curve? Any of you? Come on. Straight line with the gradient, flat line, or a curve? Number two, because if you very difficult for you to visualize, assume the number two as velocity graph. You get a velocity graph like this, uh, V versus time graph, like this, curving like this. How's the acceleration graph going to look like? So curve like this, how's the acceleration graph look like? The gradient is from highly positive become zero. So your acceleration graph going to be highly positive, become zero. So it's going to be a straight line going down. This is your acceler acceleration graph looking to look like. Okay. But if you want to convert this to your EMF, what do you have to do? This graph must be reflect at X axis. So the graph going to be where? This graph, if it's EMF, if you put it in EMF, EMF with time, it should be like this, eh? reflection of x-axis. So for the second one, for the second one, the graph should be, sorry, okay, the graph should be like this. Uh, sorry, it should be a straight line. It should be a straight line uh, like this. Uh, eh? So this is the second graph, very weird one. Eh? If those really understand the concept, I think you should visualize as a straight line with a positive gradient. Okay. That's the second one. If you cannot visualize flux with the EMF, visualize as a velocity and acceleration. But 
the acceleration graph is just reflected at x axis. So it's a straight line with the positive gradient. Okay, number three, flux is constant. So acceleration is, uh, sorry, the EMF induced must be zero, la, no doubt about that. And what about that? It's a straight line. Third one. Okay, fourth one. Anyone? I need your input. Fourth one. The EMF graph is going to be a flat line, straight line with a gradient or a curve. Flux is going down. Okay, the flux is going down, but it's constant. The flux is constant eh? and going down, sorry. So like, like, let me draw here. Like, uh, like velocity is like going down like this. How's the acceleration graph will be? Velocity is going down like this. So acceleration must be uh, negative, right? It should be negative, negative and constant line. But you want to convert it to EMF, you have to reflect it at X axis. So the graph will be up here, flat line. So for the number four, the line means be a straight line up here. Uh, so this is your final graph. So this should be your final graph. We had one flat and uh, straight line upwards, flat line, and also flat line up here, positive. So this is three marks question. The pass here. Any questions from this graph plotting? Okay, class, uh, you are listening to me, right? Okay. Plus, uh, you, I don't know whether I'm, am I connected? Yeah. Uh, connected. <laughs> oh, online lesson uh, is very troublesome. <laughs> okay. So let's we move on. Eh? Okay. Uh, so we can, okay, we can use this question, this question. Okay. Everyone give a try. November 2, question 7. Magnetic electromagnetic induction. A metal wire is held out between the poles. A permanent magnet illustrated. Uh, there is a wire. It's clamped. Okay. Okay, now. A cathode ray oscilloscope is connected between the ends of the wire. The wire plate is sensitive to adjustable 1 millivolt per centimeter. The wire gain. The time base is 0 0.5 millisecond per centimeter. The Y is plugged at its center, shows the trace seen on the CRO. Oh, this is the trace seen on the CRO. Okay, so vertically is your, you can measure the peak voltage. And of course, uh, your horizontally you can calculate the period, okay. Okay, how you get voltage here? Because the conductor, the wire has a conductor, cuts the magnetic field line of the magnetic field line or the permanent magnet. The wire experience changes in magnetic flux. Uh, therefore, EMF should induce. Eh? Okay, so that's a question, first question. Making reference to the laws of electromagnetic induction suggests why the EMF is induced in the wire. Uh, two marks. Explain why there is an EMF induced in the wire. So what are you going to say? But you must refer to the law. Eh? You must tell which law. So EMF induced in the wire. Why EMF induced in the wire? So according to what law? According to Faraday's law. Eh? According to Faraday's law, uh, EMF is induced when there is a rate. Where EMF induced is directly proportional to the rate of changes of magnetic flux. The wire cuts the magnetic field line. Therefore, the wire experience changes in flux. Therefore, EMF induced in the wire. The keyword is 
Faraday's law uh, state what is Faraday's law stated? Uh, EMF proportional to the rate of changes of magnetic flux in gauge. And then you see the wire cuts the field line, so the wire experiences flux change, so EMF induced. Okay, that should be the answer for the one. Okay, what is the answer for the two? Anyone? Why the EMF is alternating? Why the EMF is alternating? Alternative means why the voltage is positive, sometimes negative, sometimes positive. Why the voltage keep on changing in this wire? It means, in other words, the current induced is moving to the right, then current induced moving to the left. Why? So how do you explain? Use the law. So which law to be used here? Of course, Lenz's law. You have to say Lenz's law. Okay. Uh, what Lenz's law said, stated? The direction of the induced EMF is such as to oppose the change which produces it. Okay, now, because the direction of the cutting of the magnetic field line is changing, because the direction of cutting, eh, the direction of the cutting of the magnetic field line is changing, therefore, the EMF must be alternating. The keyword is the lens law. Second, you must say the direction of the cutting of the magnetic, the wire is changing. The wire cuts the field line at a different direction, first downwards. After the half cycle, the wire go and cut upwards. So when the direction changes, therefore the direction of the EMF also will change according to the lenses law, because you need to oppose the change. Okay, so that's the two answers for this. Okay, part B, you can't unable to do now because we need to finish the AC, AC alternating current. Okay. Okay, another one. Okay, this is uh, page eight, question eight, uh, question five. Page eight, what year is this? This is, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is, uh, what year is this? Uh? Uh, November 3, yeah, November 3. Okay, so give it a try. Five A. Define the Tesla. The unit for magnetic flux density. Two mark. Okay, how are you going to measure? What is Tesla? That's why it's a unit for magnetic field strength. If they say magnetic field strength, we can define F equals to B I L. So magnetic field strength is B is F over I L. So what is magnetic field strength? The force experienced by a, a unit length conductor carries a unit current flow placed perpendicular to the field. Uh, perpendicular to the field. The field is here. It's a current, it must be perpendicular to the field. That's your magnetic field strength. How do you define Tesla? So Tesla means number. If you put all numbers, what is meant by one Tesla? Uh, Tesla is the strength of the magnetic field strength where the field strength seems to be one Tesla where you put all numbers, where one Newton of force experienced by one meter of length of conductor carries one ampere of current flow placed perpendicular to the field. Uh, so one Tesla means all put numbers. Lah, eh? So one Tesla means one Newton of force. The field strength seems to be one Tesla when a conductor experiences one Newton of force of uh, one Newton of force uh, experienced by one meter length of conductor carries one ampere of current flow placed perpendicular to the field. Okay, so next. So now, so there is aluminum frame, 16 and 85, AB 1.5, 1.8 times 10 power negative 4. The window is inch along the AB. 
calculate the magnetic flux through the window. So B dot A, the magnetic field strength times the area. Uh, area is 60 times 85 in meter. So answer is in Weber. Uh, uh, this is easy. I, I don't think field you have problem here. Uh, okay, we move on. Okay, now state the window is now open in a time of 0 0.2 seconds. When open, the plane of the window is parallel to the earth magnetic field. For the opening of the window, the opening of the window, state the change in flux through the window. So this window has been opened. It was open. So that BC is positioned here now. Okay. So now the BC is positioned here, like this. Eh? Open 90 degrees now. Eh? So sorry, the CD, CD is positioned here now. Okay. So that the magnetic field is is like uh, parallel to the surface of the surface of the window. Eh? It is asking when you open this window from here to here, what is the flux change? So flux change is final flux minus the Initial flux, final zero or initial zero? Anyone? Plus the final zero is the initial zero. The final should be zero, right? The final should be zero because magnetic field and the area is like a parallel. Eh? So zero, initial, whatever answer you got earlier, you must place here. So your final answer is negative something Weber. But Cambridge mark scheme, they're going to give positive. You got negative, just put it as positive paper. Okay. Okay, leave it as negative also. It's not wrong. It should be correct, but is that the best answer? Okay. okay, so that's your change in flux. Basically, the magnitude is going to be same as the, the answer you got here. Okay. Okay, next, calculate the average EMF. So EMF is negative uh, rate of changes of magnetic flux. So uh, flux change divided by the time. Uh, time is 0 0.2 seconds. Uh, okay, so whatever Weber change you got here, let's say 0 0.2 Weber you got, just put 0 0.2 Weber and you get the answer. Okay. So it should be a negative voltage. It should be negative voltage. But as I said, uh, because negative, uh, Sorry, the, ch the changes I think is a negative, negative, negative. So you get a positive answer, a positive voltage, a positive voltage, so 0 0.2 or something. Okay. Any questions from this uh, structured question? Okay, this is one structure about that. Okay. Ah, okay, so after we calculate AMF, last question three. Suggest with reason whether the EMF calculated in two gives a rise to a current in the frame A, B, C, D or not. Suggest with a reason whether the EMF calculated in two, this EMF, is it going to give a current in the A, B, C, D? Do you will have current in the A, B, C, D or not? The answer is, of course, yes. So what's the reason? Because it's a Closed loop. It's a closed loop because it's a closed loop. Therefore, the EMF will lead to current. Not always EMF will lead to current. Eh? If it's not a closed loop, you don't get current. It need to be a closed loop. So here you got current because it's a closed loop. So you get a current. So answer is yes. Reason because it's a closed loop. So we have a current. Okay. So yes, so this is uh, induction. Eh? Okay, I go to the slide. Let's we cover up the last part. Okay, the last part is uh, eddy current. Okay, eddy current. So eddy current is uh, you learn about eddy current before, right? In your O levels. Okay, eddy current, good or bad or could be good and bad. 
it could be good and also bad lah. Uh, most of the time is bad, eddy current. Sometimes it's good. Uh, where the eddy current is good? Anyone? Okay. First of all, what is meant by eddy current? Okay. So let's say you have a pendulum here, a solid copper pendulum. You swing it. You just swing. You put the uh, yeah, swing it. You have you have a magnet at the side. Okay, you have the magnet at the side. The, the solid copper pendulum is brought to rest almost immediately by electromagnetic field. This is due to the eddy current induced in the solid copper pendulum. Okay, so if you oscillate it, if you oscillate it with the magnet at the side, what happened? Uh, eddy current is formed. What is meant by eddy current is uh, okay. Let me let me show you this eddy current. Uh, what is meant by eddy current? Okay. Okay. So this is to explaining about the eddy current. As the diagram, diagram is mixing. Okay. So you see eddy current. Eddy current are closed loop. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, oh, yeah. Now got a diagram. You see, eddy current are closed loop of induced current circulating in the plane perpendicular to the magnetic flux. You see, let's say you apply a magnetic field. You use a magnetic field, yeah? A coil is placed on top, and the coil is a AC, alternating current. So the magnetic field is changing, okay? The magnetic field is changing, B is changing, okay? And the B is changing, when the B is changing, it changes. Therefore, lead to changes in flux in the conductor. Uh, this is your conductor, conductor, okay? So you have a conductor, okay? Here, the, the conductor experience changes in flux. Flux is changing. Uh, due to what? Due to the changing magnetic field by the coil. Eh? The coil produces a changing magnetic field. When flux change, of course, EMF will be induced according to Faraday's law. Okay. So EMF will induce, so EMF induce, Try to oppose this change. The change is, uh, the change is, let's say, uh, the flux is rising. If this is the North Pole, let's say this is the North Pole. Uh, let's say the time, uh, the alternative current, let's say the current flows such a way that this is North Pole. Okay. So here, the current, the current should flow in this conductor such a way it creates a North Pole on top, right? It must create a north pole on top, so because you need to oppose the change. So tell me, how the current should flow in this conductor? Which pattern it should flow? Because you know the right hand grip rule, right hand grip rule, the current should flow in a your right hand grip rule, eh, your finger. Eh? So your current should flow in a circular path. The current have to flow in a circular path. It have to flow in a circular path so that your thumb create a magnetic field north pole upwards so the current have to flow in a circle the current have to flow in a circle like shown in this diagram the current will move in a circular path so if the current move in a circular path according to the right hand grip rule your thumb will create a north pole on top ah uh, so this type of current called eddy current eddy current is a type of current which is moving in a circular path in a conductor it happens in a conductor, a block of conductor, a block. It must be a block, a block of conductor. Eddy current, a closed loop induced current. What is it? It's a closed loops induced current. It's like moving in a circle, uh, circulating in a plane of perpendicular to the magnetic flux. They normally travel parallel to the coil. Uh, winding the flow is limited to the areas of the inducing magnetic field. Uh, eddy current uh, generates thermal energy. Eddy current, uh, is, is current normally useful if we can retrieve it into a wire and we put it into the light bulb, light bulb will light up. Okay, is, this is useful. But this current is circulating. We cannot retrieve it into the wire. It's just circulating, move around in a circular path. Uh, this current is useless for us. Eh? 
this current just go around in the conductor when there is current when there is resistance our what happen power will be dissipated so heat will generate so the conductor will start to heats up okay heats up uh, most of the time bad okay when eddy current occurs means in your mind you must you must remember in your mind that the current is circulating and the current is producing heating effect to the block uh, that's called eddy current okay it's eddy current so what is meant by eddy current eddy current is a type of current which is moving in a circular path uh, happens on the inner block of conductor in a block of conductor due to what due to changes in the magnetic flux is it useful uh, most of the time not useful okay it damage the uh, it produces a heat so it reduces the efficiency actually uh, efficiency of the system uh, uh, sometimes could be useful where this eddy current could be useful anyone where eddy current could be useful any of you have any idea where the eddy current could be useful okay guys i need your feedback any clue that where the eddy current is very useful in the in the train the, the magnetic levitate train the bullet train Okay, the bullet train uh, slows down by using eddy current. Okay, eddy current uh, because the train is uh, moving. Okay, uh, there is a magnet at, uh, at down there. Uh, the train has a conductor, and the magnetic field is applied. Uh, what happened? Uh, eddy current is produced in the body of the conductor. So what happened? Heat generated. Okay, so the kinetic energy of the what do you call the 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 train will change to thermal energy and it slows down okay, it slows down so eddy current can be used as a braking system for uh, for bullet trains okay so that, that that's where eddy current is useful okay okay i go back to this diagram so now this pendulum this 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 copper when pass through a two magnet at a side when it pass through okay what happened the copper experience changes in magnetic flux therefore eddy current is produced in the copper the eddy current causes heat generation the heat is actually experience actually retrieved from the kinetic energy of the of the copper so uh, energy of the the kinetic energy of the copper reduces because kinetic energy is directly proportional to the amplitude amplitude decreases so damping happen i think in the past year explaining this why damping happen if i'm not mistaken is like a, a four to five marks question explaining it why damping happen for this copper so the five marks you know so what you need to explain when the copper is moved into uh, uh, into the magnetic field the copper experience a uh, copper experience changes in magnetic flux okay first you must say the copper cuts the magnetic field line one mark so therefore copper experience changes in magnetic flux two mark second mark that because according to faraday's law emf is induced so current is generated okay third mark okay the current uh causes heat effect heat energy is produces fourth mark the heat is uh, retrieved from the kinetic energy of the copper fifth mark okay and the kinetic energy of the copper directly proportional to the square of the amplitude so amplitude decreases sixth mark okay you check the past year question there will be four to five mark explaining this okay so any question from this okay now how do you uh, minimize the effect of uh, slowing down for this so they say use a perforated copper pendulum okay what is perforated copper pendulum uh, copper which has a lots of holes in between la eh? 
and so holes in between got a lot of holes gaps in between if the copper pendulum is perforated it's not brought to rest immediately by the electromagnetic field indicating that the eddy current is not produced in this case actually eddy current is produced but very minimal why perforated the eddy current is minimal okay, what is meant by perforated first of all perforated means a uh, uh, like this okay let me show you okay so this is your copper just now the copper plate and eh? this is solid uh, solid the eddy current will form okay a big eddy current will form so heat is generated so it slows down and eh? slows down perforated means a copper but got a lot of holes got a lot of holes here and there. it's made of holes okay a lot of holes here and there. random holes are eh? holes and eh? this all are holes okay hole okay now you see when the magnet moves what happen when when the copper moves around the uh, uh, between the magnetic field so eddy current will form eddy current will form but the eddy current will form a smaller circle it will make a smaller circle it can't make a big circle because it make a big circle cannot because it, it cannot pass through the hole okay so it only can make a small circle the eddy current makes a small circle so the heat generated is small if it's a block the eddy current will make a big big circle eh? able to make a big circle entire conductor so big circle means uh, more distance travel the amount of heat generation is higher so it slows down faster so that's why perforated copper can minimize the slow down okay why because the eddy current forms is very minimal very small so that's the reason we use perforated uh, copper pendulum eh? it's not brought to rest immediately by the electromagnet because indicating that the eddy current is 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 not as significant as the solid one okay class any questions from here so this is eddy current la eh eddy current okay so you see that's why something is moving how do you slow it down you just place the magnet at the side just put a magnet at side apply the magnet when you apply the magnet this is what happens eh when a metal disc is spin in a magnetic field it will slow down very rapidly slowing happen eh you can slow down it's a braking system it's a very good braking system eh we use magnet to slow down a wheel which is turning okay all the cars we have is a, what do you call a rubber go and press the disc the wheel disc the car stops so then after for, after a few months later the disc need to be uh, the, the the rubber need to be changed but this one is electromagnet brake okay electromagnet brake you just you want to stop you just apply electromagnet at the side so what happened the wheel eh, when when it spins it cuts so the reasoning here yeah, when it spins when the disc spins it cuts through the magnetic field line emf is induced in the disc but because it's varying radius the emf induced will have a different magnitude hence the current induced in the disc vary magnitude and direction and call eddy current eddy current is produced la eh? eddy current is produced in the disc so of course after that you know eddy current causes heating the disc and dissipation of energy is referred to as eddy current damping happen eh? application uh, breaking electromagnetic breaking to stop high speed train so uh, this can explain four to five marks again la eh? when electromagnet is applied uh, the disc cuts the magnetic field line one mark uh, experience changes in magnetic flux on mark according to faraday's law emf induced in the disc one mark eddy current is formed one mark heat generated one mark okay so heat is retrieved from the kinetic energy of the disc on mark because yeah then it slows down okay so any question from about eddy current okay this is about eddy current so 
Okay, uh, before I put this, eh? um, okay, it's also like an current, eh? the current flows here, eh? opposing the movement. Okay, okay, I think uh, let's we go to the past here straight away. Okay, we're done with this topic. That's it. Okay, let me go to the past here huh? about eddy current. One question. Okay, this one. So five, number six. Okay, the same principle uh, they use. One structured question. Eh? The metal disc is swinging freely between the poles. The metal disc is going freely. The pole plays electromagnet. When the electromagnet is switched on, the disc comes to rest after the few oscillations. Uh, state Faraday's law, electromagnetic induction. We use the law to explain why the EMF is induced in the disc to mark. So what is it? Because the metal disc cuts the magnetic field line. Therefore, the magnetic field experience changes in magnetic flux. According to Faraday's law, EMF is directly proportional to the rate of changes of magnetic flux. Therefore, EMF is induced in the metal plate. Okay. So why the EMF induced? Because the metal experience flux change. Why the metal experience flux change? Because metal cuts the magnetic field line. Okay, that's the answer. Okay. So that's your first answer. Okay, two, explain why LD current are induced in the metal disc. Okay, because metal disc is a solid conductor, is a it's a solid conductor at a deep uh, at the different position you have a different EMF is induced because you see here yeah, uh, metal when it's swinging, when it's swinging like this, okay. Uh, here it only move only a short distance. Here will be more faster. Eh? You see, let's say you have a pendulum. Eh? You have a pendulum. Eh? It swings. Eh? The more closer, the shorter length eh, will have a smaller speed. The the end point here. Let's say this is a point B. Eh? It's a point B. It's a point A. The A will have a higher speed. The A will have a higher speed. B will have a smaller speed. Okay, so the rate of cutting at B and A is different. So here the EMF induced at B, EMF induced at B is small. The EMF induced at A is high, very high. So the EMF induced at every point is different. So this also can lead to eddy current moving in a circular path. So that's the explanation here. Explain why the eddy current are induced in the metal disc because uh, different point as a different rate of cutting of the magnetic field line. So at different point, different EMF is induced. Varying in the EMF is induced. Now this led to eddy current. Okay, led to eddy current. Okay, B. Use energy principle to explain why the disk comes to rest after a few oscillation. Okay, use energy principle. How do you get the three marks? Energy principle. Anyone? So you see, when oscillating, eddy current is formed. Eddy current produces a heating heat energy to the disk. Heat energy is actually retrieved from the kinetic energy of the metal. Because kinetic energy of oscillation directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. We learned this in SHM. So amplitude reduces. Damping happen. Yeah, so that could be the three mark here. Use energy principle to explain why the disk comes to rest after a few oscillation. So first you must say what? Uh, eddy current produces a heat energy generator. One mark. The heat energy is uh, retrieved from the uh, kinetic energy of the disk. Two mark. The kinetic energy is directly, kinetic energy of the oscillations directly proportional to the square of the amplitude, a third mark. 
So therefore, amplitude reduces uh, lead to damping. Okay, so this is a seven mark question. Okay. Okay, class, another one question. Uh, now overall, uh, okay, November 5. A, define magnetic flux density. What is magnetic flux density? So F equals to B I L. So what is magnetic flux entity? So force experienced by a unit length contactor carries a unit current placed perpendicular to the field. Uh, it's called magnetic field strength. Okay. You have a magnetic field uh, makes a theta, angle of theta from the area. Okay. So now the question is using symbol A, B, N, and theta making a reference to the magnetic flux in the coil, derive an expression for the magnetic flux linkage through the coil. Okay, what is the magnetic flux linkage through this coil? So what is flux? B dot A dot N, but because they give angle here, you have to resolve the B normal to the surface and eh? normal to the surface. So the B must be like this, normal to the surface, 90 degrees. Eh? So you open the angle. So the flux must be B dot A dot N cos theta or sine theta. Because you open the angle, eh? you open the angle. So cos or sine, anyone? Yeah, class, you open the angle. Normally, the formula I teach you is cos theta because the angle given is, this is the area, this is the magnetic field strength, okay? You normally give the vertical angle theta. So the B, you just resolve back, close the angle, you get cos. But in this case, the angle is at the side here. So when you make the B as normal, you open the angle, so it have to be sine theta, B and sine theta. Uh, is your answer here? Okay, now, uh, state Faraday's law. Uh, many times I already told you what is Faraday's law. Okay, we skip this. Okay, B. The magnetic field shown in the, shown above is changed like this. Okay, the B is changing like this. Is it a coil? Or oh, the magnetic field, eh? the magnetic field strength changed like like this pattern. What is the, e, the pattern of EMF induced? One minute for you. Sketch by using a piece of paper. Get the pattern. First one, second one, and the third one. Can you draw the pattern here? Okay, so B is imagine it's like a flux. Eh? Get your EMF. You can imagine this as your velocity graph. You plot your acceleration graph, reflect in x axis, you get the EMF graph. One minute for you. Okay, the first one of the graph should look like this is your velocity graph. Eh? How's the acceleration graph should look like? You go for like acceleration. Velocity is constant, one. So acceleration will be zero. Eh? Acceleration will be zero. So one, the EMF also will be zero. Eh? So one EMF is zero. K2, the velocity is like going up. Velocity is like a straight line. Eh? Velocity is like going up like this. 
So RC acceleration graph should look like. The flux is changing, la, eh? the flux is changing with a constant. So Vt is like a straight line. So acceleration must be constant, la, constant but positive. But EMF must be reflection on x-axis. So the graph should be what? Should be a negative one, eh? negative like this, flat line. Okay, going down, going up. Okay, and the third one. Third one. The flux change is a uh, negative gradient. Like velocity is negative gradient. Velocity is negative gradient. Acceleration will be what? Acceleration will be negative. But reflection in x-axis become positive. Yeah, it's positive. So here, yeah, the EMF must be positive. Yeah. So this should be your graph. Okay. Okay, so I hope all of you got this graph. Eh? Okay, so all flight line. Eh? Okay, this we discussed this eh, the same way. The last, uh, last question for today. Eh? Okay, last question for today is actually uh, let me check. Okay. This one. Only the part one only. Uh, part one only. Okay, this is a question. Okay, this is uh, page 24. Uh, page 24. What year is this? This is... Uh, sorry, this is your November 7. Uh, this is sorry, June 7, June 7, eh? Question 7. Okay, read the question. So a magnet is vertically moving into the coil and coming out. It's oscillating, the magnet is oscillating. But now what we do? We put a coil here, a coil with the resistance eh, attached here. So the magnet is moving down and up, moving down and up. So they say the movement of the magnet is found to be like this. Ah, okay. So this shows that the magnet experienced damping. Eh, damping. Okay, now the question is, State and explain by reference to the electromagnetic induction the nature of the oscillation of the magnet. Five marks. Uh, see, five marks. Lot. Uh, five marks is a lot. Uh, one grid can be shifted from A to B, maybe. Okay, uh, not one grid. Uh, five marks, you know, it's quite a lot. So, uh, please try to think how do you get these five marks? How do you explain? The state and explain. By reference to electromagnetic induction, the nature of the oscillation of the magnet, why it experienced damping? Okay, that's the question. Five marks. So how do you explain? The one I told you just now, the six marks question. You see, first you start with what? The magnet go and cuts the, uh, sorry, when the magnet move down, the what? Uh, the coil cuts the magnetic field line. Okay, the coil cuts the magnetic field line. Okay, the coil cuts the magnetic field line. So what happened? So that's one mark. Magnetic field line is cut through by the coil. Second, what do you see? Therefore, the coil experience induced. Uh, coil experience changes in flux. Okay. Okay, changes in flux. So then what is it? According to Faraday's law, EMF is induced in the coil. Okay. Then what is it? Because the closed loop, current pass through the resistor. Then heat dissipated. One mark. Then what is it? A 
according to conservation of energy the heat energy is actually retrieved from the kinetic energy of the spring okay then finally what is it because kinetic energy of oscillation is directly proportional to the amplitude square the amplitude reduces so damping happens uh, it's a very long explanation but repeated many years why the oscillation damping you must start with cutting of magnetic field second you must say the conductor experience flux change third you must say according to faraday's law uh, emf is induced into the coil fourth because the closed loop current start to move around fifth you see heat generated then you see heat is taken away from the kinetic energy then you see finally kinetic energy proportional to the square of the amplitude amplitude decreases okay so that's the five marks question eh? so any question guys so far okay so this topic is tricky short but tricky but to some revision okay so you see the answer for the first one uh, this is the answer given by the mark scheme eh? five marks oscillations are damped amplitude decreases one mark as magnetic move flux is cut by coil one mark emf current induced in the coil one mark causing energy loss across the lost in the load or in the resistor energy is derived from uh, oscillation so force opposed yeah oscillation yes uh, these are the things la eh yeah. hey guys so any questions okay so i done with this topic so if you don't have questions we can stop here so tomorrow we'll be starting with a new topic alternating current okay 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 class so see you then see you tomorrow yeah.